friends. I hope you're having a good day. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, happy holidays. I'm recording this on the day after Christmas. I wasn't sure if I was going to do anything this morning, but I went for it anyway. I do have um, on my table here a small amount of new drugstore products, and I thought maybe I'll just do like a mini get ready with me, like just use those products, have my try on happening using only those new things, and maybe it'll be like kind of a shortened get ready with me that way, so I can just sort of reference the um, aspects of these products as I put them on. Um, I probably burned everybody out on my big long Saturday video I did a few days ago, so we will make this a little bit shorter. Also, I probably need something a little bit shorter editing-wise because my birthday is tomorrow and Pup's coming into town and we're just gonna have a big old time. So let's get started. I've got my skincare on and I got a new foundation product. It's from NYX and it's the Bear With Me Blur foundation and the packaging is really cute it's like a jumbo concealer is what i think of whenever i look at this um, but it is a blurring tint foundation they say the shade i got is 04 light neutral they say medium coverage matte blurred finish and honestly this reminds me so much of the experience i'm having with the new hourglass just think about how this looks as it gets on my skin and just the color tone of the foundation i'm using a pearl sized amount i guess See, it's like the exact same color as the hourglass was on my skin. It had that light kind of yellowy look. So I just streak it around everywhere. And I've applied this with both a beauty blender or an e.l.f. total face sponge and my brush. It seems to blend easily either way. I'm using my e.l.f. duo complexion brush right now. So yeah, I would say I've had a few days experience with these products that I'm talking about. This is more of a haul than a full on review. But as you can see, we are getting some decent, I would say definitely medium coverage. Really seems even. The finish is on the matte side for sure. I wouldn't say it looks too heavy, but there's not a lot of glow happening with this. So I guess what I'm saying here is the performance seems pretty consistent with the claims they give. But isn't it funny how it has that very same exact color tone as the Hourglass foundation I have and kind of a similar look on the skin, maybe a little more matte than that. Matte than that. I need to keep a closer eye on how it's wearing all day, but as far as a finished look goes, you know, I think it looks pretty decent. It's a decent matte medium coverage. Uh, I prefer the look even more of my Wet n Wild Photo Focus just because it's not quite this matte. Even the matte version of Wet n Wild Photo Focus just still gives a little something to the skin. So this may be a little more matte than my skin probably wants in the dead of winter, but feel-wise, I mean, it doesn't feel incredibly drying. I've got a lot of juicy skincare on underneath, though. Okay, fast forward ahead a bit, and this is what things look like after I have added in my concealer and powder. Today I used my NARS Soft Matte Concealer on the under eye and around the nose and a little blemish down here, and then I set that with my Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. So here's where we're at with the face. Um, I will tell you an under eye powder or setting powder that I did not use today is this new one from Milani, the Conceal and Perfect Blur Out Powder in 01 Translucent. It seemed to only come in one shade, and let me tell you, that's too dark. I wore this the first day I got it. It has a nice little closure here that actually makes sure none of the powder sifts out, and then it's got kind of one of those Huda style mesh things there. But the tone of this powder for my under eye, I would say unless you are tan to you know a range of deeper skin tones this is too dark on the under eye because it just looked it looked darker than the powder i was wearing all over the rest of my face okay so it just was not the effect at all that i wanted it looked blotchy and clinging weirdly to concealer and just flat out too dark i really can't get any more use out of this one again it's called conceal and perfect blur out powder and the shade i have is just zero one translucent i think that was the only option so i just thought oh that'll be a light translucent powder too dark for me, but maybe workable for a tan or deeper skin tone. So now I'm going to just lightly set all over with another new powder. This would be more of an all over powder foundation-y type powder. It says hybrid powder foundation from the Maybelline Superstay line, which we love Superstay. Matte look, weightless feel, and I have this in what shade? 128. And by the way, isn't this sad? In my package, I had a couple of new little eyeshadow palettes. One was from CoverGirl, one was from Milani, and I did an Ulta order. I know I take risks when I do that, but sometimes the smaller things, like they will put in little bubble 
packaging, you know, like little bubble wrap pouches, but everything was just flying free in that box. And both of those eyeshadows, not just like one shade breaking and creating a small mess inside the palette itself, both completely shattered and it was like a bomb went off in the box. And even inside my Superstay, inside this, you can see remnants of the dark eyeshadow on that powder puff under there. I mean, just ridiculous. Ridiculous. I was wiping things down with wet wipes. There were a few gifts in there that I was giving to mom. Everything looked like it was about a hundred years old. <laughs> I was like, I tried to wipe that down best I could, but we had an explosion. Anyway, texture of this powder. Um, we have several good drugstore powder foundations out at the moment. Um, this is very creamy and very smooth feeling. I have used it with a very light coverage product. And I feel like if I, you just see me put this over half the face, it definitely does enhance the coverage. I haven't worn it 100% alone yet, but in that sense, on that day, I'm trying to remember what the really light thing was I had underneath. But most of the coverage was coming from this and it looked nice and really matte. Like, just look at that. I'm trying to think if it's all that much better at this point than like the CoverGirl Outlast Red Pan. Um, powder or the L'Oreal Infallible. I feel like they're all performing kind of similarly. I think Maybelline just wanted to have, you know, a horse in the race as far as this stuff goes. It really has a soft feel. It feels exactly also, and I said this when the new L'Oreal Infallible powder foundation came out and everybody was raving about it, but that stuff felt exactly like L'Oreal True Match and so does this really. Um, it's just that next level softness to the powder and it can be applied in a way that it really adds more coverage to your skin. So I would say I'm liking this so far. The tone seems good. Um, you can just see with one quick once over on top of an existing medium coverage foundation, like it really adds a lot. And I felt satisfied in what it added to a lighter coverage too. So to be continued on that, but so far I'm liking that powder. Okay, we're gonna move on with a new bronzer that I got. I got the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzer. So they've already had out the putty bronzers. Putty line I think has been really successful for e.l.f. And I got this in the, in the shade Seaside Shimmer. It's in the shade Seaside Shimmer. Yep, still got it. Okay, so how shimmery is this really? Well, look at it in the pan. Let's give you a look there. Can you tell? The shimmer particles, man, my hands feel dry. I need to get some vanity cream on there. But sheared out, I don't find the shimmer to be very visible. Like once I take my little swatch and I blend it into my skin or blend it in on my face, I don't see a ton of shimmer. Also, I don't feel like I get super satisfied on the level of color unless I swipe it on with my finger to get enough product on and then blend it in. Like going straight in with my brush, at least for this shade, doesn't feel like enough for me. That's the same reaction I had to the color Honey Drip in their regular version. And I'm willing to bet, yeah, these are, Honey Drip's a little cooler than Seaside Shimmer. But yeah, that was the first one of these things I got. And then I went with a deeper shade that actually makes quite an impact. And that one's called uh, Sun Kissed. But we'll use this, again, the way I like to make it work is just swiping it on very deliberately with my finger. Uh, because I just can't pick up enough product with the brush. This is this is soft and smooth, you know, it's a good texture, but it's got a little more dryness in it than the M Cosmetics So Soft Sticks or even my Persona stick. So I'm going over this and I'm not feeling like by this point it shears out so much, you're not seeing any major shimmer. So if you want to try these and you're kind of scared, ooh, is it going to be too much shimmer? At least this shade, <laughs> not very much shimmer at all. It's visible by the time you blend it out. Must have product status. I'm not feeling that way, but just sharing. You know, it's giving me a gentle contour here. And it is snowing again right now, you guys. Last I saw on the news, they said, oh, little clipper system is gonna bring down a little extra snow. Shouldn't be of much impact, but man, it looks like we had a lot of snow. When I looked outside and I turned on our light this morning, I was like, wow. Okay, so see, light definition a light amount of bronziness and you'd be hard pressed to find any shimmer. Now it is going over a lot of matte on my skin, but that I think should create a contrast here. And if there's a lot of shimmer, it should be able to show on top of this very blank canvas, you know? Yes, I am not seeing a lot of shimmer out of that. I'm gonna continue on with a few steps and then we have a new brow product to talk about. Okay, so here's what's been added to the skin. I use my Wet n Wild Mellow Wine Blush, which I love, love that matte, beautiful blush. Wearing some Hello Halo as my highlight very lightly there. Can you see it? It's in the shade Halo 
hello goodbye. I put on my Wet n Wild, uh, what's with Wet n Wild right now? I wasn't even thinking about this. The retractable brow pencil in nice ash or ash brown. Um, I've got that in my brows and then we have a new gel to try. It is from Milani. They put out a Stay Put Liquid Brow Wax, okay? It says long wear brow look. Here's the thing, it really is more like a wax than a gel because you see it. So I'm gonna get up nice and close for this application. So maybe you can see the fact that there's like some of that white is kind of coming off in the brow. And I can't decide what I think of this. It's thickening, okay? It has a thickening effect in the brows more than a gel does. At the same time, it kind of lightens and it also leaves little bits in there that maybe on a blonde brow would be no concern. It wouldn't contrast that much, but in my dark brows, I can totally see those tiny white pieces. So I go in with a spoolie and I can tell, oh man, there's some hold happening. Good hold, but it leaves that little bit of stuff. And there's just the one shade in this, just 110 clear. It leaves just ever so slightly a white cast. Like my mom, who's trying to make her brows look thicker, she feels like they've thinned over time, you know, and she's a taupe shade in her brows. I'm wondering about recommending this to her because it, it does really give an odd feeling of thickness into the brows. Just makes the brow hair seem a little more lush. I don't know what that is. It's like the waxiness of the texture is filling in somehow without any color. Look at the white and it's not like it just disappears on its own, but it really, the hold is nice. If they could take this and tint it a little bit so a brunette doesn't have that white. You see? Got some little bits in there. But it's not a huge deal for me to go through and kind of pick those up basically. But yet, am I losing some hold because I'm raking through with another spoolie, albeit very lightly? But am I taking away some of that nice waxy hold because I go through? Probably to some extent I am. But I like this product. I like the consistency. I like the hold. The waxy texture does make the brows somehow look thicker, which I don't know was even a claim here, but it does that. But if they could tint it so we don't have a white cast on brunette brows, that would be awesome. Get on here like, these aren't really gonna be reviews. This is gonna be more of a haul. I don't, got some opinions. <laughs> Okay, here's where we're at now, my friends. I put on Milani eyeshadow primer, and today I used my Too Faced Born This Way Sunset Stripped. I have a new eyeshadow palette that I got for Christmas, but I'm just, I'm, I'm saving that for another time. And I do love this palette. I was reminded of how much I love the tones in here. I love the richness that this palette gets to. But I'm not gonna do any eyeliner because this is where we really got some things to discuss. Um, I've got a lash primer, a general mascara, and also a new tubing mascara. Milani is so trying to make you think this is Thrive liquid lash extensions with that color, you know? It's like, Milani, why are you choosing turquoise randomly? <laughs> None of your other makeup looks like this, but yeah, we know the connection they're trying to make us make here. But anyway, this is where, gosh, with this lash primer, I'm still really trying to figure this one out um, because this is the Maybelline Sky High Lash Sensational Tinted Primer. So could this be as good as Estee Lauder's Little Black Primer? That's the question. So far, I'm not sensing as much curl holding ability. Does it provide an added like thickening opportunity? Yes, I think I do see that, but I'm not sure I see quite as much separation and curl holding and, and just freezing on the lashes the way Little Black Primer does. But you take it out, you've got this little you know, a small tapered brush, little short rubber bristles, and I'll show you the effect this has on the lashes. I gotta look right down into that mirror. That's how you can see the entire lash from the root to the tip. So this is honestly putting way more on my lashes for a primer than I would have expected. Okay, like that bulked them up almost the way one coat of mascara does on my eyes. And it's to the point where it's really sticking some of them together. Don't want my primer doing that. So that's a bit of an issue there, but we're, we're gonna keep it, keep it light, keep it that amount. I do like that it's black, but I just feel like I gotta keep playing with it some because I have to work with this now with other mascaras, not just like my other new one that I have here and kind of see how things go. I do like the packaging. I like that white, I don't know why. Can we see this at all? Sorry. I mean, it's not like, loading them down in a massive way, but it's putting more on than you'd expect a primer to.
So there we are with just the primer on. Can you see how these are like standing up a little bit more? I feel like I'm already sinking a little bit on this side. Then I got this, which I know for it to be accurately evaluated, we need to use this without a primer. Okay, so separate topic here. I got the new L'Oreal Telescopic Lift in the shade Black is Black, and oh no. Oh no, we didn't want that to happen. Actually, I'm gonna let those little smudgies dry and see if I can flake them away. It'll cause less problems for us. But we'll talk about this. Maybe next video I do, some time will pass and I'll have more chance to like try these products out. But interesting thing about this one, it's kind of coming with a CoverGirl clump crusher technique of having that flat side where there is nothing. There is nothing but just the flat bare side of that wand, the naked wand right there. And then on the other half and the sides, we have some short spikies. The back side has some incredibly short, barely visible bristles, but I would say it's not as bare as this just junk bare side. So that was a quality I really liked in Covergirl's Clump Crusher because it let you kind of load up some product and then carry it on through. But you could kind of decide how you held the wand in order to, you know, pace the process. Okay, curl is completely dropping. Yeah, now that I'm really watching this, I'm kind of, it's becoming evident. Let me see if I can, oh yeah, that works. We're gonna add some of this on top of the primer. We're just gonna see what kind of look we can achieve. You see that flat side is just putting the product on and then you kind of twist as it goes up. I was never as gaga over just traditional telescopic as a lot of people were. What that primer is doing is thickening up the lashes because with the first coat now of this mascara, I do feel like my lashes are looking a lot thicker than they normally would with just an initial coat of something. So that's nice, but if you can't support the curl holding, eh, okay, so we're like applying product or combing up through. We have a nice thick lash there really with both the steps, just not quite as much curl as I would like because my lashes could look even bigger if the curl held better. Come over here. It's almost like we're frosting the lashes, like we're going up with a spatula of product and then we're combing it through. I don't know much about cake frosting, but don't sometimes you see people with this big flat like frosting tool frosting the cake and then going around with something that gives it like grooves or something like a comey type thing that gives it a texture, a groove. That's kind of what is happening with this. Oh, the curl is so not hanging in, but I am getting thickened up lashes over here. Um, in the days I've been wearing this combo, it has not seemed to flake off on me. So I, I appreciate that. Hi, Bisky. Biscuit's got shut in Bubba's room last night by me. I didn't know she got in there and then she didn't come out for breakfast and I swore that she'd gotten shut outside or something and was out in the snow. <sighs> I was calling for her, couldn't hear her, couldn't hear. And then finally she meowed loud enough to let me know like, I'm up here. I even opened up the girl's room and looked in there. I didn't think for a minute she was in Bubba's room. And I thought I saw her last night before I went to bed. Sorry, I had to unload the memory card just then, but the girl has dropped. We do have some thick lashes. Um, I, I'm gonna have to try to reinforce that curl a little bit because it's just not what I want it to be. Moral of the story, I'm feeling like with every time I use this, it's helping with the thickening this primer is, but it's not helping me on the curl hold. And then this from Milani. So you guys know I use Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water. That's a tubing mascara on the lower lashes. Also very familiar with Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. And now Milani has put out their take on a tubing mascara. It's called Highly Rated Lash Extensions. And I don't currently have a Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions in my stash right now, but I believe this is a lot like the brush. Now I've used this a few times on the lower lash line and I don't think I've had any smudges, but I need to watch it even closer. And I need to try it someday just on the upper lashes just to see how it does in that respect too. But today, since we're trying so many things, its job is gonna be the lower lash. But I know I wore this for a couple of days and did not notice any kind of smudge. So if I can make this work well for me on the lower lash line and not have to repurchase Cali Ray Come Hell or High Water, obviously that's great. So there's my lash look, you guys. I just don't know what's going on with this left eye. 
get up there, lashes. The biggest question marks I'm leaving you with on this video is basically how good is this telescopic lift on its own? And then also using this and trying this on upper lashes as well and seeing what kind of a big volumized lash look we can get out of it. But I'm gonna throw on a lip product and then we'll just have a little wrap up here. Finished look for today with the lips. Um, really random lipstick that I pulled out here. It's Love Trap from Urban Decay and it's a shine formula and it's really pretty. I just wanted a kind of color I felt like I hadn't been wearing a lot lately. So threw that on and then I kind of defined my lips a little bit better with this shade of Superstay Ink Crayon in Chase Dreams. So that really well coordinated with the color of that. So that works. I like it. As far as what's on the rest of the face, let's just recap here. This has been decent um, if you're into a matte medium coverage. I want to keep a closer eye on how it's lasting for me really throughout the day. I mean, I've had some busy days. I'm very sidetracked from monitoring the wear of the makeup, but I feel like so far so good and it's just crazy how much it reminds me of the new Hourglass that I've been playing with um, in tone, kind of in finished look, only maybe a little more matte than that. But just slightly though, it's pretty close. A definite no for me is this Milani Conceal and Perfect Blur Out Powder. It's just too dark. I feel like this is kind of a pretty much a no for me. This Sky High Primer, it just isn't helping me in the ways I need a primer to help me. Like it, nice thickening, but I need more curl, better curl. Not a huge fan of the Luminous Putty. Experiencing what I've experienced, I've got a lot of great cream bronzers and stick bronzers right now, and this just doesn't really stack up. It's kind of stiff in texture, and I feel like I gotta work harder to blend it out, number one. Number two, I gotta work harder to make it show. And number three, the shimmer effect is just really, really mild and barely there. So we had this that was okay. This is in the okay pile. I think this will Milani Stay Put Liquid Brow Wax. I think they're really onto something because that holds really nicely and it adds a look of thickness. I think if it could, they could just tint it a little bit for us brunette folks, that would be nice. I like the Super Stay Powder. I mean, it added a really perfected look to everything on the skin when worn over a coverage product and then when worn over barely their coverage, it still does a really good job. And to be continued on these mascaras, the Telescopic Lift and the Milani. It's got to do a little more work with those to figure out where exactly we're at. And maybe, just maybe, I could use this with some other mascaras. You know, maybe this is more so the culprit on curl holding. Other than Lash Paradise, I'm let down a lot by L'Oreal mascaras like Voluminous. Voluminous drops my curl like nobody's business. If this has some Voluminous formula in there, that could be partially responsible for like fighting with this. Maybe this was trying to do a good job of holding my curl and this just kind of tanked it. We'll see. Um, but I just want to give you that little update, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I will see you again very soon. I love you. Bye.